welcome back to my channel side hustle seattle so first of all you're probably like why are you in a kitchen like it's just because the lighting is the best here for right now like no i'm not about to make a cooking video i can't cook so if you ever see me making a cooking video please just tell me to stop it like immediately but anyways what i want to do actually is follow up on a video that i made a few weeks ago which was about live notary which is a platform that i've used in the past getting acquired by a company named panda doc and so once it got acquired they formed this side of the business called Panda Doc Notary, which essentially is their RON platform. Now, when I was going through the process of trying to figure out, well, what platform do I want to use instead of Live Notary? Of course, Panda Doc Notary seemed like the first place that I should start. So I actually got a chance to get a demo and see what the platform is all about. And I want to provide you all with the information. So I got to see, you know, pros and cons, the pricing, where it's available, etc. And so we'll just jump right in and start from there. That way, once you have the information, you can see if this is a platform for you. So let's just get right into it. So let's start with where it's available. So Pendadoc Notary is available essentially anywhere that remote online notarization is approved. So if your state allows notaries to do notarizations remotely, more likely than not, Pandadoc Notary is available there. So I think it's what, like 41 states now, 43 states? However many states it is, it is available there. So now that you know that, we have to talk pricing. So when it comes to pricing, it is $89 per month and $10 per transaction fee. So $89 per month is a fee that always is occurring. $10 uh, per transaction essentially means anytime you actually go and do a notarization, you are paying $10 per that transaction. And that monthly fee is actually billed quarterly or annually. So the monthly fee itself will only be billed quarterly or annually. Now I'll be the first to say $89 a month is pretty hefty, um, especially if you still have a transaction fee, just my opinion. Um, but I will say you do get a lot for that monthly fee. So it's not as if you're just getting around platform and not a lot of features. There is a lot that comes along with that cost. So let's jump into that. What is actually included in the price? What's included in the price is you get access to actual PandaDoc. So the thing about PandaDoc Notary, what it is is actually PandaDoc with a notary add-on. So if you don't know what PandaDoc is, it's essentially an e-signature document creation platform, right? So you have the ability to create, edit, and sign documents electronically. You can create you know, documents, invoices, ledgers, whatever you want to create. And so that's what PandaDoc is. And so you automatically get access to that. So like, let's say you also, you know, as a notary, you have like a DocuSign account or whatever other account, you can instead get rid of that because as soon as you get PandaDoc Notary, you already have PandaDoc, so you don't need both of those different types of platforms. That will solve all of your e-signature uh, needs anyway. So you get access to that. Also, one thing you get is for that $10 transaction fee, that's a one-time fee per transaction. So it doesn't matter how many documents that you're signing. So let's say you, you know, have the one transaction and it has 10 documents that have 100 seals. That would never happen, but let's say it does. That $10 transaction fee still stays the same. It's just $10 one time, regardless of the amount of documents and the amount of seals per the transaction, which is pretty awesome. So another thing that you get added on when you purchase it is you get a free digital certificate, you get a free notarial seal, and you get a free digital signature. And so a digital seal and a digital certificate are pretty much things you always have to have and a digital signature, but pretty much every platform gives you your digital signature for free. But a digital certificate, a digital seal, a lot of times you do have to get those on your own. So it being included in the price is great because if you've ever purchased a digital certificate through like IDentrust, then you would know it's typically between like $60 and $180 or so, depending on how long you get it. So that cost is kind of baked in to your monthly fee. So you're essentially getting that for free, which if you think about it, kind of lowers your monthly cost, if you will. And it looks like on the website, it says, depending on your monthly volume, there is a potential for discount. So if you do a lot of monthly volume, there is a potential that you can get some of these fees lowered at a discount. What that discount is, I am not sure. I didn't mention it exactly, but if you're interested, you can always just reach out to them and I'm sure they can give you a more exact answer. So next we have to talk pros and cons. So like I said, I got a chance to sit through a demo of the platform and after seeing it, there's some things that I absolutely love and there's some things that I would like to see added. So let's just go ahead and get into those. Let's start with the pros though. So one of the pros that I can say is the user interface is extremely straightforward. Like I have seen a lot of platforms, I've tried a lot of platforms, I've demoed a lot of platforms, I've demoed most platforms. And I will say as far as the actual user experience once you're in the signing, 
this is easily the most straightforward way. And this is not a sponsored video. I'm just posting it because I think the information is great. And so trust me when I say, I think it's probably the most streamlined user experience that you can have once you're actually in a signing. And that's great because if you've done RON before, you know that most people who are doing RON are doing it for the first time. And so you want them to have, you want to essentially eliminate the technology curve, right? And having something that's straightforward helps get rid of a lot of that curve. And so that's one thing I really love about the platform. So another thing I actually like about the platform is, so this platform, you don't bill your client directly through the platform in a way. So you know how like on some platforms right after the notarization is done, the signer has to pay and then that's how they have access to their documents. But on other platforms, you know, the platform just charges you the notary, the transaction fee, and then you figure out the payment, you know, off to the side on your own, however you want to do it. Well, it's that way, right? You don't build the client directly after the signing. However, because you have access to PandaDoc, PandaDoc actually has a way for you to invoice the client. So you can create an invoice on the PandaDoc side. You can link it with your, fav your favorite payment processor. So your Stripes, your PayPal's, your QuickBooks, and you can build them that way. So it's kind of nice. You have the option to, of course, be able to build them how you want, but you can still kind of keep it within the same PandaDoc ecosystem. So I love that aspect of it. And another hidden gem that they have that I feel like is understated is actually in the signing. You can mute and unmute your mic or like mute and unmute your video and you can um, pause or stop your video. So I don't know how many times I've been in a signing and like somebody gets distracted, even myself every now and again, but like, you know, the signer all of a sudden gets interrupted by a kid or a spouse or something happens and they need to get up and you're like hearing all this commotion in the background. I'm like, I don't need to hear the conversation between you and your wife. Like y'all can have that separately, but at least this way you can like, you can mute yourself. So I don't have to hear what's going on in the background. If you need to get up and get something, you can pause your video if all of a sudden something's going on in the background that you don't want recorded. So I love that aspect. And I don't think I currently use a platform that has that, but I feel like every platform should. So that is one of my favorite features that the platform has. So we talk pros, we naturally have to talk cons. Now, there are a lot of things that I'd like to see that are kind of already coming down the pipeline to be launched if they haven't already. So I have my demo a few weeks back, um, and I know they were slowly rolling out different changes. So some of these may already be rolled out by the time I have this video up. But if not, these are just the things that I saw that I would want to see differently. So you know how I spoke about the fact that the user interface is so straightforward and so to the point when you're actually in the signing itself? Well, part of that is because you have to fully prep the document beforehand in the signing because there is no ability to add things to the document during the signing. What I mean by that. So you know how you're adding stuff to the document, you like you drag over, okay, well, I need the signer signature here, I need their date here, I need their name here, I need to add my stamp here. All of that has to be done prior to the actual signing because once you're in it, you cannot add anything. So if I miss a spot for a signature to go, you currently can't add it in during the signing. There is no button to add in any sort of tools. Whatever's there is there. If it's not, you need to start, reset, and do it um, again in order for it to actually be in the document. Now, that I know is a change that's coming fairly soon because, you know, like I said, they realize that that's something that is absolutely needed. So you will have that, but currently you do have to pre-prep everything. Now, I there's a lot of reasons why, there's things I like about it because like I said, it makes the signing really straightforward. Once you're in there, it's like what's in there is in there. I don't have to worry about the signer trying to figure out what to do. They just click on stuff and that's it. But like me, you know, if a document is long, then of course I'll pre-prep, I'll slide everything in. If a document is one page, one signature, I'm not gonna pre-prep it. I'm just gonna go into the signing, it's gonna be five minutes anyway. And so it'd be unfortunate if I got into the signing for a document that needed minimal effort and I wasn't able to actually do it in the session and I had to do all that work on the front end. So that's one of the things that's definitely a big con now, but again, it's coming down the pipeline. The second one is currently a signer cannot upload their own documents. I always prefer to upload the documents for the signer anyway, because again, sometimes I prep, sometimes I don't. Um, but at the end of the day, if the signer wants to add a document, I want them to have the uh, ability to do so. And currently they do not. Again, something that I think is coming down the pipeline if it hasn't already been launched. So those for me are currently the biggest cons. Now I try to be as fair as possible when doing some of these reviews, which is why I'm making caveats to the fact that things will come later. Because listen, the platform recently launched, 
things will be rolled out as the time comes. How the platform looks today won't be how it looks four months from now. So I'm trying to give as much of an unbiased opinion as I can. So that way you can just get the information and then make the decision for yourself. You don't need me to make that decision for you. But that's kind of why I'm making so many caveats to the platform, just because I know it is newer. And so there's going to be a lot of things that change. That's the same way with every platform. If you sign up right when it launches, I guarantee look at it three months later, the pricings have changed, the features have changed, what they offer has changed for good, for bad, for worse, for whatever. And so a lot of stuff, it will change as this platform continues to grow and develop and continue on. So just be aware of that. So if you're watching this video like way in the future, I guarantee a lot of things I've said are probably no longer relevant. So just be aware of all of that. One thing that is a little bit tricky about this platform is actually signing up. So if you saw my first video that I talked about the platform and how I needed the business address and whatnot, it can make it a little bit tricky. So after doing the demo, I asked the question like, well, why do you require a business address in order to do the demo and kind of get to the sign up period? And what they said is essentially, you get a lot of spam if you don't. So if you don't do business addresses, then you get a lot of like fake accounts, you get a lot of people who aren't actually interested and you just can like, you boggle down your site a lot. So that's why they do business addresses. So if you're looking to do a demo and you go to sign up and it's like, hey, you need a business address. If you don't have one, you're not gonna be able to get through to the demo. So I asked for what the workaround could be. So what the workaround is currently, is you have to sign up for a free um, e-signature account through just normal PandaDoc. And once you have it, you're actually able to contact support or chat support and you can just say, hey, I wanna upgrade to a PandaDoc notary account. So that's the way to do it now without having to have a business address. You just go to do sign up for a free PandaDoc e-signature or yeah, e-signature account and then chat, use the chat feature, ask for a PandaDoc notary account and they'll go through all the steps to get you the pricing and the billing and the demo and all of that. So that's currently how it works. And I'll send links in the description and whatnot so you can navigate that. But honestly, what do you think of the platform? How do you like the price? How do you like the features? How do you like how, what it has to offer? Is this a platform you would actually consider? If not, why? If so, why? So leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Thank you again for watching my video and I will catch you in the next one.